Like clockwork, another two and one day yesterday <laughs> on the morning wager as Mark Zeno and I, what is it, 36 and 18, oh. our last 54 plays? Yeah. We, we basically just go two and one every day. If you like going 67% with your bets, stay tuned. We will be talking the biggest matchups for college football Saturday. Yes, a look ahead. And we have two game fives, Mark Zeno, in yes. the LDS, in the MLB uh, playoffs. What a big day on the program it is. I mean, I'll let you get through that whole introduction. Um, that was pretty impressive. I appreciate that. I wanted, I wanted to jump in a couple of times. Yeah, the two, I mean, I can't be mad at the two and one thing um, because it's really good to go two and one every single day. You're going to make a lot of money. But we need to, have to mm -hmm. start putting up some Reno's. Like, you know, we, we, we need to kind of just change things up a little bit. That said, uh, I will break my arm, patting myself on the back for my breakdown of the Yankees game last night. And uh, for anybody who, who ventured out into – the wild, wild world of WT.buzz slash MZ uh, and grabbed my package yesterday. Um, we went one-on-one, -on -one, but the Yankees' breakdown was chef's kiss. I think I told you yesterday on the show, I said it on several different media outlets. Cole was going to be great. Walker was not. And somebody in the Yankees was going to get a base hit with runners in scoring position. They did it twice last night. Twice. After doing it just three times the previous three games. So, um very happy and relieved that the Yankees moved on. Sorry to our production staff and Dan Alexander that the Phillies did not, but we don't have to do that. But it's fun to take shots at people. I know. <laughs> it's fun to take shots at people who work here because that's what we do on the show. Everybody is free yeah. game. So, you it's, know, whether it's, it's not just Tuesdays with trash talk. They're yeah, I, Jesus about. Christ. I mean, my God. I, I just. Uh, I was responsible I, in I'm full leave honesty. That hanging out there for a while. So oh, please, that's that's we can, we can go a lot of places with that. But uh, I'll raise my hand here over to old Tokyo Brandon. I'm glad, by the way, you've got that M mug. By the way, remember your name. Uh, that's very good. That is money. That, that is money. Mark Zitto of quote many media outlets. That's an impressive thing to say about yourself. Uh, I was responsible for the one Better loser. By the way, <laughs> yesterday I was. Uh, resp I I said the under in Cleveland in Detroit on yesterday's show yeah. that lost. But I was very happy. I was still happy because I had my my top MLB play that I gave out to my clients. It was a 3% winner on Cleveland. What a thriller that was. We'll what talk a disappointing baseball. push that was for me. What a disappointing push. I know you, you and I were going back and forth a while. I had Cleveland first five money line. For them to hit that mm -hmm. home run at the top of the fifth, I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. Bobby, just get to the bottom of the fifth. Oh. Yeah. But that's why you play yeah. the money line in those spots, right? Like, that's what the advantageous part yes. of the money line is. I was set up Absolutely. for a win, and it was better than a loss to push. And, you know, uh, unfortunate way to lose it or not win it, I should say. But I'll take the push and be happy. It's not losing money. I just spit on my computer screen. Somebody throw the Hawk 2 a graphic up there. Uh, anyway, oh, let's talk. Let, uh, we're going to talk baseball later in our best bet section. Yeah. We will actually yes. hit both game fives and give you a oh, I, I, oh, 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 Jesus Christ. Christ, for all that is holy. Uh, yeah, let's get to college get, football Saturday. No, no, second. no. We have to get some more professional people behind the scenes. In the last 24 hours on this show, the things that have popped up on that screen have been, like, you know, just <laughs> offensive. Offensive. Yeah, oh, no, oh, 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 I, I demand there. better support from the staff. Most popular damn show on this network, and we got these clowns in the background <laughs> throwing stuff up on the screen that doesn't matter. I like them. I like them all. Uh oh, oh, oh now, now see, now, now, now that, okay, let me tell that's you okay. something right there. That's okay. No, that, that, because that, that was, that, no, that was, that was disgraceful. That was, that was an all-time low point. Uh, I believe in the history of the, in the history of the internet. Anyway, before we get thrown off the airwaves, we need to give people some picks. We're almost oh, four okay, minutes into the show. We've not given a pick. Uh, we've only talked about our picks that have won from the previous day. Let's talk about picks for Saturday. Mark yes. Zinno, your neck of the woods, SEC country. It's LSU and Ole Miss from a scheduling perspective. Brian Kelly and the boys from Baton Rouge probably could not have asked for a better setup here on Saturday night yeah. in Death Valley. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's a night game in Death Valley. That's number one. And you get you get you have LSU getting points. You have LSU off a bye, and you're facing an Ole Miss team that you have, oh, by the way, won five straight home games against. The Rebels haven't won in Baton Rouge. Why do you have to say it that way? I mean, it's fun to say it that way, but it's stupid. Don't they have haven't to. won down in Louisiana since 2008. 
Um, and so I'm in a spot here getting points with LSU. I know Old Miss is the better offense on paper. Uh, and they're sixth in the country in EPA per play, if you believe in that sort of thing, expected points uh, you know, per play. But LSU is 12th. Tigers are 14th in college football in dropback EPA, which, you know, in the passing game. LSU not far behind. Um, or LSU just only three spots behind. Ole Miss, rather, in that in that category. Garrett Nussmeyer, the quarterback for the Tigers, very good year. We're looking at Jackson Dart of Ole Miss, who's put together two back-to-back kind of lackluster games. And the entire offense has played two lackluster games. Obviously losing to Kentucky 2017, nod to the Wildcats defense. Um, and, uh, and then just only scoring 27 against a South Carolina team that isn't very good. Uh, and struggled in the first half against them. It was a closer game in the first half than it ever should have been. All this adds up to night game, LSU, uh, at home. I'm getting more than a field goal. I'll take the three and a half without hesitation. Uh, this is LSU. Sprinkle a little if you want on the money line for a little extra love. But give me the Tigers plus a three and a half. Smash that like button if you agree with taking the points uh, with LSU. Mark Zinno, uh, I believe it was last week on the show, made fun of me, talked in a nerdy voice. I don't sound like that uh, for bringing up EPA. He brings up EPA all of a sudden. I'm going to say congratulations. I'm not going to make funny. I say welcome to the wide world of advanced stats, Mr. Zinno. Ohio State and Oregon. Oh, you are chopping at the I'm big let, I'm, No, because I don't want to. I don't want to derail the show again just to make fun of you. But that's neither here nor there. So okay. I'll just well, there I'll we drink go. My, my coffee and my M mug. <laughs> that is Mark Zinno of many media <laughs> outlets, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, many Ohio State media, <laughs> many media mark money. Okay, that's a lot. A lot of M. Okay, Ohio State and Oregon. That's a lot of O. Uh, I like the over. Ah, how about that in this game? Mark, I've been digging through the box scores of these two teams, and I have seen a lot of red zone inefficiencies appear. Ohio State, a couple weeks ago, beat Michigan State, okay? Uh, In that game, Michigan State turned the ball over three times in the red zone. Wow. So Ohio State should have given up more points there. And then you look at Oregon. So, Look, a lot of people, they know me. They know I, I always gravitate towards the underdogs. You see a home underdog in a big matchup like this. You would think, oh, BP's dabbing the points. I can't, my power ratings have been down on Oregon all year. So I'm not backing them plus the points. But I will say this, you go through their box scores. They have been more dominant the last couple games than the final score suggests against both UCLA and Michigan State. They outgained UCLA 431 to 172. They outgained Michigan State 477 to 250. Led Michigan State 31 nothing in the fourth quarter. Here's the key for Oregon. We talked about this yesterday with the San Francisco 49ers. Show best bet winner was over 13 and a half in the first half. The 49ers have been plagued by red zone inefficiency all year on offense. You, you could make the same case for Oregon. All three Dylan Gabriel interceptions this year have come in the red zone. We have seen money come in on the over in this matchup already, Mark. I know these two defenses are good. I think both offenses are more than capable of scoring 30 here. In fact, of the 10 combined games these teams have played, only once has one of the offenses not scored at least 30 this season. That was Oregon only putting up 24 against FCS Idaho in the opener. I'm going over in Oregon and Ohio State. I think both these offenses move the ball. I think both quarterbacks are going to have a lot of success. Put up big numbers. That is how I would play the marquee matchup on Saturday. Your thoughts, sir? Um, Yeah, look, if I had to choose, and I said this yesterday, if I had to choose between these two games, right, like I lean LSU because I sort of, trust Ohio State as a team more than I do Ole Miss, despite the fact that Ryan Day is generally a putz as a coach in these in these big spots, right? He's really bad against ranked opponents. He's really bad against undefeated opponents. And he's really bad mm-hmm. on the road against either one of those two. So I think he colors his beard, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but nonetheless, I, I think your point about these two offenses is succinct. Um, really, it, it, what it boils down to is Ken Oregon stop. Can Oregon's defense stop Ohio State? Because I do think there will be points scored. It's just a question of 
when it comes down to it in a field goal game. And this number went down from four at the open. If you missed the three and a half and you got the three, I mean, I don't think it's a terrible number to take with Ohio, uh, with uh, Oregon. If you got it, obviously much rather have the uh, the three and a half when it comes down to a field goal. But it's 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 a good spot um, for for the Ducks. I I, I lean uh, on Oregon in this spot. You know, and there's the guys. I mean, it's such a huge college card this week in Texas, Oklahoma, even Tennessee and Florida, which used to be like you know a good series until a big deal. Uh, the last two coaches at Florida decided to put the entire program in the swamp, literally. Um, so, but there's there's a lot of great a lot of great games out there um, that you and I have talked about all week long. Now is a good time to remind everybody. You and I have very different college cards this week. We're only on one yes. game. It's the same. You know, so we got that three that three day package coming up uh, for the weekend. Today is the day to go out and buy it, so you'll get all of it. I have a five percent best bet on Saturday college football, so you'll get that if you missed it on a uh, two dollar Tuesday or to five dollar Tuesday, whatever. Uh, sorry, trash talk. Get confused with all the silly nicknames of trash talk Tuesday and uh, Wiener Wuss Wednesday, whatever the hell it is. So um, be- beyond all that, uh, we have very, very different cards. Today is the day to go get that. That you get us both. It's a double team. It's a tag team it's a two for one it's a menage a trois of action um between the three of us you buy it and brian and i are the other menage of the trois i think that's how it goes anyway you get the graphic up or not i'm gonna get the graphic thank you thank you thank you that is why you you know you you always rip on me for self-promotion but i think we're finding out why i do the pitches here yes if you're wondering what the hell mark zeno is talking about (laughs) buy one get one free it's very simple you buy a three-day all access from one of us you'll get the other guy for free we're two very good looking people right there okay so you get every play for the next three days from both Zitto and I, you do not have to engage in a barrage a trois. It's very I, simple. Yeah, you I pay sixty nine dollars. You will get every crazy. single NFL, every really single college dollars? football. Yeah, is yes, it, really it is. 69? Yes, it oh is. My God. All right. Oh my God, kill me oh, now. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part is to go. Brian goes. That's why I do the pitches here. That's why I do the pitches. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> yes. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> every it's NFL really play. Six, 69. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Beavis. All right. Every NFL play, every college football yeah. play, every MLB play for Mark and I, the both of us, for the next three days, just $69. Yes, like Mark said, today is the bet, is the day you want to buy. We said that on Wednesday. We said it yesterday. Act now. You go to either of our pages. You can take advantage. Oh, by the way, what a football season for yours truly. 29 and 14, 68% overall, up 41.1 units. That is number one, Mark Zeno. And you and I combined on Saturday and Sunday last weekend were 10 and 1. I don't know why you would vomit when I would promote your record. Okay. Show best bet time. I was time. vomiting before you started on my record. I was only vomiting when you were promoting your own record. You, you selfish shill, you. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Best bet. Best bet. Major League hey, Baseball playoffs. Way, yes, Major League Baseball. We we are actually rooting. And, and the morning wager crew needs to actually root for this. We're going to get to our best bet, which is in tonight's game. We have a game five tomorrow uh, between the guards and the, and the Tigers. Do you, I don't know if the, the morning wager fans, you know, who are lovers of the show realize that, again, I'm a Yankee fan and you're a, Indian slash Guardians fan, and your old man is somebody that I definitely desire to drink beers with and watch the Guardians because that must be a trip. I, I mean, one of the most I, incredible I, things. I, that- get the feeling, I get the feeling that BP's old man sits there and is ripping Schlitz beers. Like, no, that's sh- not true. He's down. not a big drinker. Oh. He's not a big drinker. Oh, he's, he's not a big drinker. Oh. But he did last night. He did last night text me, they should bunt. To which I said, Dad, bunting is stupid. There was a word between is and stupid that I texted him. They bunted. It worked. The suicide squeeze. And he said, what do you got to think about? He said, what do you think about what that, Mr. Sports that? Handicapper? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. And then he proceeded to call me and tell me all of the times mm-hmm. bunting has worked going back to 1996. <laughs> he said, do you remember what Omar Vizquel bunted in the 1996 ALDS? I said, no, I don't, Dad. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, there's a point here why we're rooting for the Guardians the tomorrow is, night because, we are, because it would be great for the we show. We want the Yankees Guardians to go against each other. 
So every day when I get on the show and there's a game, I can insult Brian Power personally. Nothing about baseball or sports handicapping, but I could just make fun of him as a human because that's what I'm going to do during this series. I will take all of my hatred for this Cleveland team and their desire, my desire to make them lose and watch you be in pain over the Yankees beating them. I will make it personal, very personal. And the audience I will love it. I don't like that. I actually have a financial stake invested anyway in the Yankees making to the World Series, so I'll be okay either way. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah, there we go. All right. Talking about okay. financial stakes. The yes. San Diego Padres, you and I have both bet them to win the World Series. We did that many months ago. They are yes. in a winner-take-all situation against the L.A. Dodgers. We know Dan Alexander would like uh, some better tables for dinner. We talked about that before the game. So he, too, is rooting for the San Diego Padres tonight. Uh, Padres, plus price, game five, that's what we're doing? Your thoughts? Yeah. I, I, I don't listen. The, the Dodgers' best pitching effort came when they went in a bullpen game. They didn't give up a single damn run. No. And Dave Roberts, in all his infinite wisdom, decides, hey, let me put two starters out there who aren't that good. Okay, I can shut up. I mean, it's Yamamoto to start the game, and then the alleged plan is to go to Flaherty afterwards. Checks notes. Oh, the Padres already smacked both of those guys around. So uh, have at it, Dave Roberts. Padres aren't losing this game. So uh, I, could, I could conceivably play this. And this is just, maybe I'm blinded by how good I think the Padres are. But I told you before the game, Padres first five money line, Padres first five run line, Padres money line, Padres run line. I'd play them all. I'd play them all. Now, the juice on the run line is pretty hefty. It's pretty hefty. I think it's around minus 170 to take the one and a half. But um, I I would tell you again, I I think that the Padres offense is going to carry them. If, mm-hmm. if the Dodgers come out and shut the Padres down for two straight games, it would be, I think, the first time they've done it all year. Like, that's just generally the way this this whole thing has gone. And I want to check this real quick because now I'm morbidly curious. Um, I, I can I, I can tell you about San Diego's offense. That uh, game four was the first time they've been shut out since the first game post All Star break. I, I don't have the the head to head stuff with the Dodgers, but. I mean, this is a team that's only lost back-to-back games, San Diego, four times uh, during a 47-21 and 21 stretch. So they have been, yeah. generally speaking, an excellent bounce-back candidate in the second half of the season. Uh, again, there's enough there for me to look at it. Plus, you get Darvish on the mound, who's been excellent. Um, Outstanding. I, I, I'm all about San Diego. Now, that said, BP, since we do have futures on San Diego, um, you and I were discussing hedge hedging and, you know, for just for the audience out there, when you get in this spot, this is again, we talk about like the advantageous reason to get a future or take a future that when you get to this spot where they're facing elimination, you have an opportunity to hedge and at least, you know, get some of your money back. Um, and let's just use round numbers. So for argument's sake, I got the Padres at, uh, I think it was six to one and, and 18 to one to win or eight to one and something, I forget what the numbers are, but to win the, to, uh, to win the, the NL and then win the world series. If I wagered a hundred on each. Okay. And I just want to use this for round numbers to make it easy for everybody and everybody to understand. The idea here is for me, when I hedge to at least try to get, in my opinion, get at least a hundred back. Right. So this way, I, mm-hmm. you know, if, if I lose, and if the Dodgers win, then I have only lost half my original bet, right? So I can get a hundred back, and and you know I, I'm you still want to stay invested in the future ticket because it has more value. You don't want to try to you know cash all the way out because again, if you're making something that wins a hundred dollars now, that's cutting out out of your profit from if the Padres win this thing and the Dodgers lose. But I guess what I'm what I'm driving at here is, and I was I asked you this before. Curious your thoughts. <sighs> I almost just want it. My hedge almost feels like I want it to be the Dodgers on the run line at plus 150, 155. Like you're laying 155 with the Dodgers on the money line and the juice is too much. You know, I would essentially have to lay 150 to win 100. And that doesn't work for me because, you know, again, if the Padres win, then I have now invested 350 on the off chance that they might lose in the LCS. Or the World Series, because right now there is no financial benefit. Like 
if they lose in the LCS, that future value is in my hand. That, that, that's not the uh-huh. case here in the LDS. So that's why I've kind of trying to feel like, hey, can I squeeze this in the window where as long as the Dodgers don't win by one, I'm okay. I think that's probably the best way I want to approach this thing. Thoughts? I'm not hedging. I'll tell you what right now. Our show best bet, which you see right there. Well, Hold on. I want to be very clear to the people. I always like to be very clear to the people, okay? Navigate these choppy waters. You see our best bet on the Padres? That's a 3% client play for yours truly that you're getting for free uh, here on the morning wager, okay? I'm on the San Diego Padres tonight. You Darvish has been outstanding since joining from the IL. In terms of hedging, yes, it's very interesting. Now, you could be very upset if if the dot – the. I get what you're saying that you would have then two plus money prices if you're laying if you're playing the Dodgers on the run line, and you just have to avoid what would be a disaster, a DEFCON five, if you will, of the Dodgers winning by one run. Then you're very, very upset. Then you're out of all your, <laughs> then you win nothing. Uh, you, you've lost all your money. So it is an interesting way if you're like us and you have bet San Diego and you're uh, in the futures market. Yes, there is an opportunity to hedge here uh, that Mark laid out. I ain't doing it though, man. I'm rolling with the Padres. I, I would say this. I want Dan. I, will say I want. I want, Dan, I want Dan Alexander to wait less in Los Angeles next week for dinner uh, for tables. So I'm rooting for the Padres. I will. I will say this much: um, that I can see this number already moving early this morning. To be honest with you, um, where it's coming down in favor of San Diego, it opened up at minus 140. Now we're we're, we're you know. Uh, sitting in the minus 135 range, starting to come down a little Mm -hmm. bit. Maybe the best thing is to wait until first pitch and see if Dodgers money comes in. Um, Bet it live. Yeah, that could be the other way to do it too. Bet it live. We'll do it live. Not a bad idea. We'll do it live. All right. That does it, I think, today for the show. We have given you a lot. Not just plays. Entertainment. Given you... Yes, boatloads of entertainment. We are hoping on Monday. We are hoping on Monday to report a Yankees Guardians ALCS because that would be a lot of fun for each and every one of you. And a three and oh. And a great weekend. Sixty nine dollars. Hey oh. Get you to both of us. Every single play this weekend from those two very good looking gentlemen, in my opinion. All right. Everybody, I want you to have a great, happy, safe weekend. Until next time, let's cash some tickets. Enjoy the weekend.